How's it going everyone? This is my blank. Welcome back to my channel and late again But hey at least I've moved into the new place thing studio whatever you want to call it But more on that in another video because today we're taking a look at Ryzen plus fast memory and low latencies tight timings to further improve from where we last left off 3600 megahertz RAM the community around Ryzen is very strong and there's a lot of people using their curiosity and knowledge and exploring new things on this platform. This is how this video came to be. While for some of you what I'm about to show today might not be fresh news, I believe it is for the majority of us. I've been closely following RAM developments on Ryzen for around one and a half months or so ever since someone tipped me off in the comments on what people were doing with tight timings and their Ryzen 7s. But first, a quick note on how the platform itself has evolved in this time after this message. Wondershare's Video Converter Ultimate is a very fast video converter. Take your favorite holiday clips, apply effects and even edit them in a timeline before choosing from a wide list of video formats that will be encoded using fast GPU acceleration. Download videos from different websites, create DVDs and enjoy extras like VR video encode, a GIF maker or a never handy screen recorder tool. Check out more by visiting the link in the description. After JSA 1006 dropped and brought a whole lot of memory fine-tuning options, every manufacturer updated their motherboard's UEFI with these changes. I'm speaking strictly as an Asus Crosshair 6 Hero user since I've owned this from its release and let me tell you, this board has gone leaps and bounds. My board was capable of running 3600MHz RAM, for example, even on the very early UEFIs, but the process was extremely tedious, I even had a video up with tips and tricks at that point. Boot up was very slow, cold boot to cages and memory training was always a problem with lots of failed attempts. I'm now running UEFI 9920 and this feels like a completely new board. It's much faster to boot, much stable and best of all memory training is miles better. I can cold boot at any frequency and tight timing within reason and capabilities of RAM and IMC of course and training almost always works on the first try. Anyway, the fine people of the internet found out that timings actually matter a whole lot on Ryzen and as a result we got from someone called the Stealth a set of tight timings for RAM running at different high speeds. Unfortunately, if you're going to attempt this you'll be needing Samsung BDI ICs on your RAM like usual. It's the best pair by far for Ryzen even at this point in time and don't expect to go anywhere near these low latencies with Hynix or Micron based RAM. For testing purposes I've chosen two kits of Samsung B die. One is a G-Scale Trident Z 3600MHz CL16 on all primary timings and the other is Team Group's Extreme 3600MHz CL18 202020. The difference between these kits is IC binning. I'd call the Trident Z and any kit with high frequency, low and uniform out of the box timings as high quality BDI. There's also CL15 kits at this frequency which would probably be very high quality BDI. On the other hand, Team Group's BDI kit is just normal lower bind ICs, hence the much loose factory timings. The difference between these kits is price and you'll find Team Group's Extreme with slightly lower prices. If we are talking about the kits themselves, both are a high quality single rank implementation, quality PCBs and fancy heat spreaders. Team Group's Extreme feels very premium in hand with its machined aluminum spreaders while G-Scale has given its Trident Z the same attention to details, a black PCB and hefty aluminum heat spreaders. As far as performance goes, there's a clear gap between them and we'll talk about that a little bit later. First, I want to show you guys how complex the memory timings page looks now on Ryzen top end motherboard. First of all, we've got a slew of memory straps to choose from up to and including 4000 MHz. I remember having a handful of options in the past on the latencies page here, but we've now got a sizable roster of settings including PROC ODT, processor on die termination settings which are a big help in memory training and stability. If you want to apply these timings on your own Ryzen PC and if you're not very knowledgeable on what all these timings refer to, and it's okay I don't know all of them to be honest, I'd recommend sticking with the stealth presets. 
Most of the timings are calculated and not chosen at random, so be careful what you change. This Google spreadsheet calculator made by a swell fella I don't know for crediting purposes, but thank you, should help you out here. Anyway, manually entering these timings is the first step, closely followed by a bump in SOC voltage. It clearly helped me stabilize some low latency timings, so I try 1.05 to 1.1 volts SOC on the first try. I got the best results with PROC ODT at 53.3 ohms, but feel free to try settings between 40 and 90 ohms. Last but not least is the DRAM voltage. Both these kits run at 1.35 volts default, but need a bump to reach error-free status with low latency timings. So I've managed what I'd like to call very low latency 3466 MHz with the Trident Z kit requiring a voltage bump to 1.4 volts. I call this very low latency or VLL for short from now on since I further tightened a bunch of timings including TRRD and TFAW which was found to positively impact performance on Ryzen. The Trident Z is a very capable set of RAM and managed to pass 600% error-free HCI mem test. Now with Team Groups Extreme, well, there's a reason for the much loose timings. This kit can't achieve 3466 VLL despite tinkering with settings like PROC ODT, SOC voltage and a hefty bump to DRAM voltage to 1.5 volts. It did manage 3200 low latency timings, the stealth settings, with 1.48 DRAM voltage. In testing you'll see that this is still extremely powerful and for most of you it might easily justify spending less for a tad bit less performance. Other than that I've kept 3600MHz CL16 primaries with the rest on auto as reference for what was my previous fastest memory config on Ryzen and added 2666MHz everything completely on auto which set the RAM to CL16 on the primary timings as a baseline that most of you can relate to. This time however I tested with an AMD GPU, an RX Vega 64 overclocked to 1610 MHz locked core and 1070 MHz HBM clock at high not ultra settings and 1080p in my usual roster of CPU intensive titles. The go to reference here is the 7700K at 5GHz running the same 3466 VLL settings. And oh boy let me tell you that timings make a world of difference so let's start with BF1 which clearly performed much better on Ryzen and VLL. In my previous testing with an Nvidia card I managed to almost catch up to the 7700K but with the Vega card Ryzen's on top in this highly multi-threaded title. I've got frame times as well but we're only going to compare Ryzen 1700X with 2666 RAM and 3466 VLL. I opted for this since the difference is quite huge in some titles, maybe even akin to having a flat out faster CPU. And from the looks of the graph you can see how much better 3466 looks compared to 2666. Moving on to Rise of the Tomb Raider Geothermal Valley and this is a new one for me, Ryzen on top of the chart in this title and area. Not by much, but enough to clearly spot areas during the benchmark, hit 100 plus FPS on Ryzen while sticking to around 95 FPS or so on the 7700K. 3200LL RAM is again faster than 3600CL16 and I think the use of a fast AMD GPU paints again a different picture than my previous Nvidia GPU testing did. Witcher 3 was quite anticlimactic on Ryzen and I got very weird behavior here with the 7700K clearly faster in all areas. I think the drivers have something to say here especially since both on the 7700K and 3466 VLL Ryzen I was seeing GPU usage in the very high 90s all the time despite the very different outcomes. But taking a look at the frame times, well check out the last part of the graph, the city market which is very CPU demanding and where 3466 VLL easily distances itself. Ashes of the singularity see some amazing gains from fast RAM. 3466 VLL on Ryzen finally manages to get it to the top of the chart in this title. Performance stacking here with an AMD GPU is similar with an Nvidia one so I'm quite sure that the results will be the same on a fast Nvidia graphics card. 3200LL is as usual faster than 3600CL16. 
Again, the frame times for 3466 VLL are on another level and I was consistently seeing much higher GPU usage when compared to 2666. Lastly, it's Watch Dogs 2, where with an Nvidia GPU and 3600 RAM last time, I managed to catch up to and outperform the 7700K, which was expected since this title is thread count dependent. With the RX Vega, 3600CL16 managed to be below the 7700K, but 3466 VLL sees some amazing improvements here and matches the 7700K with the added mention that Ryzen, again, felt smoother in this title. We can see some huge differences in frame times between 2666 and 3466 VLL like we did with Ashes before. Alright, what's the takeaway here? Well, 3600CL16 was my previous champion for Ryzen. 3466 very low latency is on another level and I'm not done tweaking. Next step is 3600 low latency or very low latency if the IMC allows it. Second thing is that 3200 low latency is always faster than 3600CL16, which means that you don't need top of the line B die to get some awesome performance out of Ryzen. What's more, Team Groups Extreme is more often found on sale, so be on the lookout for this particular kit. Some of you might be wondering how Ryzen at 3.9GHz and an IPC deficit can be faster or equal to the 5GHz 7700K. Well, don't forget that it has double the thread, so if we can make, and we did, each and every thread that little bit faster, it's going to add up and give us some amazing results. Let me know if you want to see the same testing done with a fast Nvidia GPU, for me it would be interesting to compare, but I want to hear your guys thoughts and if you'd find it just as cool. Alright guys and gals, if you want to further support this channel's growth, consider looking at my Patreon page linked in the description. While you're at it, leave me your comments, questions and suggestions down below, check out my Twitter account and thank you for supporting this channel by subscribing, see you next time everybody, bye bye.